Hello and welcome to this tutorial on trigonometric special angles. In this video you will learn the six trigonometric functions, the Cartesian quadrants and how they apply to trigonometry, the difference between degrees and radians and how to convert back and forth between them, each of the special angles, why they are special, how they are used, and why they are helpful, <coughs> the six trigonometric functions and their special angle values. Okay, so we're first going to look at the six trigonometric functions. Okay, so there are three common trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and three that are not so common, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Each common function has its corresponding uncommon function, which is, in fact, the reciprocal of the common function. So we have sine is equal to 1 over cosecant, and cosecant equals 1 over sine. Cosine equals 1 over secant. Secant equals 1 over cosine. Notice here that sine and secant do not go together. It's sine and cosecant. You might think that cosine and cosecant should go together, but that is not the case here. Finally, tangent equals 1 over cotangent, and cotangent equals 1 over tangent. And remember uh, from the definition of tangent that it is sine over cosine and t cotangent is therefore cosine over sine. On this slide we have a picture of the Cartesian quadrants labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. The most common quadrant used in trigonometry is quadrant 1 where the angles between 0 and 90 degrees lie but you need to know the angles in the other quadrants. And it's always good to remember which quadrant is which. The way I like to remember it is the number 2134. When the quadrants are read like a book, the quadrants read 21 across the top and 34 along the bottom. If I remember the number 2134, I always know which quadrant is which. Knowing which quadrant an angle is in can tell you what sign, positive or negative, the answer will be. For example, the sine function is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, and negative in quadrants 3 and 4. Therefore, we can say the sine function is positive for angles between 0 and 180 degrees, and negative between 180 and 360 degrees. Reference and memorize the table below, which summarizes these signs for each function. Now this table you'll see has sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent sine values for each of the four quadrants. Notice how sine is positive in both 1 and 2, and then is negative in 3 and 4, while cosine is positive, negative, negative, positive, and tangent jumps between positive and negative. Also notice that sine and its corresponding function reciprocal function, cosecant, have the same signs in the same quadrants. This is also the same for cosine and secant, and tangent and cotangent. Degrees and radians. We all grew up measuring angles in degrees, but in higher level math, measuring angles in radians is much more common. One radian is equal to 180 divided by pi degrees, or around 57 degrees. 1 degree is equal to pi divided by 180 radians. To convert between the two, multiply degrees by pi, then divide by 180, or multiply radians by 180 and divide by pi. For example, pi divided by 4 radians, by the way, we usually call the pi divided by 4, we refer to that as pi by 4. So we don't say pi divided by 4 radians or pi over 4 radians. We say pi by 4 radians. It's fast and easy to say. So pi by 4 radians equals pi by 4 times 180 divided by pi. Notice that the pi's cancel each other out. So uh, the answer we come up with is simply 45 degrees. Another example. 90 degrees equals 90 times pi divided by 180 equals pi by 2 radians. It's quite easy. You just have to make sure you're going 
the right direction. If you go the wrong direction, you're either going to get a really a ridiculously large answer or a ridiculously small answer. So when converting between degrees and radians, have some common sense. Radian values will always be between 0 and 10, whereas degree values will always be between 0 and 360 or so. Special angles. Special angles are the angles at which trigonometric functions give exact fractional answers, such as 1 half or root 3 over 2. There are many such angles, but they do have patterns which make them easy to spot. In quadrant 2, the most commonly used quadrant, the special angles are 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, or 0, pi by 6, pi by 4, pi by 3, and pi by 2. In the other quadrants, the corresponding special angles are related by adding 90, 180, or 270 degrees to the quadrant 2 angles, or if you're working in radians, by adding pi by 2, pi, or 3 pi by 2 to the quadrant 2 angles. On the next slide is a complete list of the special angles for quadrant 2. So here's that list. One, one impo very important thing to note is when it gives you a value of 1 over root 2, as in the value for sine 45 degrees. 1 over root 2 is also sometimes written as root 2 over 2. These two values, root 2 over 2 and 1 over root 2, are the same number. They are written just two different ways. So be on the lookout for each of those numbers. They are the same thing. And also note, um, say under 10 theta, 90 degrees, not defined. Of course, um, this is because this function is, is trying to divide by 0, because tan theta is sine theta divided by cos theta, and this wants to do 1 divided by 0, which of course you can't do, so the function is not defined. Just some notes on special angles. Sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant are smoothly oscillatory. This means they go back and forth from positive to negative smoothly. So when we look at the sine function going from 0 to 1 in quadrant 2, we know that it will go from 1 to 0 in quadrant 1, from 0 to negative 1 in quadrant 3, and from negative 1 to 0 in quadrant 4. The other functions, cosine, cosecant, and secant, follow this pattern as well. Tangent does not. That is important to note. Where, wherever sine is positive or negative, so is cosecant. The other pairs follow this as well. If you are not sure what sine secant takes in quadrant 4, try to think of the sine cosine takes in that quadrant. As I mentioned before, it is easy to think that cosine and cosecant are the pair. They are not. Cosine goes with secant, and sine goes with cosecant. Uh, another th important thing to note is that the sine and cosine of special angles that are multiples of pi by 4, for instance, 5 pi by 4, 9 pi by 4, 13 pi by 4, or 45 degrees, so 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 225 degrees. These special angles are always 1 over root 2 or negative 1 over root 2. And also remember that 1 over root 2 equals root 2 over 2. So it's always going to be root 2 over 2 when the angle is a multiple of 45 degrees, such as 135 degrees, 225 degrees, etc. Also note, if you don't know the tangent or cotangent, but you know the sine and cosine, you can use these to find the value you need since tangent is simply sine divided by cosine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. Here's some examples. So here are three questions, which we will be going through on the next slides. First example question we're going to look at is find the exact value of cosine 5 pi by 6. 
5 pi by 6 is in quadrant 1, where we know the cosine function is negative, quadrant 1 being the top left uh, function in the Cartesian plane. 5 pi by 6 is a special angle whose cosine is negative 3 over 2. We know this from one of three ways. We could look it up. When we're first starting out learning these sorts of materials, this is the way, this is the way we would find the answer by merely looking it up. However, this is not optimal. Memorizing is better. By memorizing it, you don't have to look it up, and on, a on the test, you're not going to be able to look it up. So memorizing it is definitely the best way of doing it. If, for whatever reason, you can't memorize it, or you have a mind block on the test, you can always think of it in, in an intuitive way. By realizing that 5 pi by 6 is close to pi, where cosine is negative 1, so we know the answer is going to be close to negative 1. We know that negative root 3 over 2 is negative 0.866. This answer is very close to negative 1. So we know it is the right answer. Root 2 over 2 is 0 0.707, and 1 half, our 0.5, are farther away. Our second example asks us to convert 7 pi by 6 into degrees. We convert to degrees by multiplying by 180 and dividing by pi. In this case, the pi values cancel, and we are left with 180 times 7 divided by 6 equals 210 degrees. We can also do this problem in our heads by realizing that our angle is pi by 6 more than pi, or 30 degrees more than pi, which is 180 degrees. Therefore, 30 plus 180 is 210 degrees. If this is difficult for you, you should do a lot of these questions. It'll become second nature to you, and an and intuitive understanding of this material is very important for success in this subject area. Our last example asks us to find the exact value of secant 945. Now, this might look really tough at first, but note that if you're asked to find the value of a really large angle, you can always subtract off <coughs> multiples of 360, since these multiples do not change the answer. So if you were to get find the cosine of, of uh, sine 1440, you could take off. Uh, 4 of the 360s and it becomes sine 0. So for secant 945, we can take away 720 degrees right away. So we take off well, two full circles. Makes no difference. We just wipe them off. So our new question is secant 225. Secant 225 is 45 more than 180. Since it's a 45, and by a 45 I mean uh, a special angle 45, we know the answer is going to be root 2 over 2, would be positive or negative. We don't know which at this point. 225 and 945 as well are in quadrant 3. Secant and, cos and cosine are negative in quadrant 3. Therefore, the answer is negative root 2 over 2 or negative 1 over root 2, which is the same answer.